And as more chatbot options become available, there is now one specifically geared to answer questions about one Bay Area city. Joining me now to discuss San Francisco GPT is founder and co-creator Rahul Sonwalker. Thank you so much for being here. Of course, thanks for having me. And we have uh, your website right here behind us. We're going to mess with it here in a little bit to see what it can do, Rahul. Uh, but first, tell me, why did you decide to build this and, and what's the goal for users? Of course. So I'll talk about what it lets users do. Mm -hmm. So San Francisco GPT is an AI tool that lets people in San Francisco ask questions about the city that they can't find answers to on Google. So you can ask things like, what neighborhood has some two-bedroom, two-bathroom apartments and the least car uh, carjackings. Mm -hmm. And you get instantly answers to that, those questions. It combines both of those exactly. and it gives you the answer to that. Exactly, so okay. think of it as a data analyst in your pocket. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be a data expert to crunch all the data, write the code to get that answer. It will just do that for you. Oh, okay, and why did you decide to build it? I mean, what's the purpose of it? What's the goal? Of course, so we are, we are a group of uh, AI engineers. We build a lot of AI products. And about six weeks ago, we had this idea that you know this AI has a ton of potential. Uh, it can you know query data, process a ton and ton of big data databases, mm -hmm. um, and we thought you know this can do a lot of public good for people in San Francisco, for people in California, for people all around the world who are interested in knowing stuff about their cities. Mm. Um, there's a ton of public data out there, and how do we use AI to leverage? Um, all that data to do public good. When you're talking about that data, where are you getting most of this data that populates when I, start, I put in a question? Great question. So our data comes from a bunch of different sources, uh, but all of it is public data that, that you can find on government websites. Mm -hmm. So it's everything from uh, SF311 data, SFPD data, uh, US Census data, um, Plus, if you ask questions about restaurants or houses, it comes from Yelp or Zillow. Mm, okay, so it's the information that's already out there. You're just trying to make it easy for people to get it all in one place. So let's, um, let's test it out. Let's do it. All right, so this is kind of a computer behind me, so I'm gonna make sure the cursor is right there. And it says, ask anything about San Francisco crime, drug use, homelessness, demographics, incomes, bars, etc." Okay, so let's start with um, something easy. And uh, let's see, the best uh, coffee shops in San Francisco, how about that? Let's do it. Okay, so what are the best coffee shops in San Francisco? Okay, all right, and uh, this should quickly come up with an answer, right? Let's see, let's see, it's going. Okay, so there, uh, you see, they're listed in order, so it starts with Excelsior, uh, Neighborhood, Universal Breakfast and Lunch, uh, Potrero Hill, Icon Coffee. Um, it gives you the rating and the number of ratings. So how, how is this data coming up for us right now? We can even see the code right there too, which is cool. Exactly, so what's happening is, this AI is taking the question you asked, converting it to a, a like an analyst query uh, in SQL, and then running that against this database of coffee shops that we have. So it kind of understood that you're looking for the best coffee shops in San Francisco. You probably need the neighborhood, the ratings, the number of ratings, and it writes that query for you like a data analyst would, and then run that query against a database and give you that data. Oh, okay. Um and let's try another question. Maybe we'll go with something more serious. A lot of people have been talking about crime yeah. in San Francisco. Um, so let's type this in. Uh, how many homicides happened in San Francisco? Well, I need to type that right. <laughs> in 2022. Okay, so we'll pop that up. Um, and uh, let's see, it's pretty quick too with you know how quickly it comes up with the information. Um, okay, so you and I talked about this before. Um, the data here, it says that there were 14, which in full disclosure, it's, it's not accurate, right? Um, our data journalists looked into it and they say the actual number is 56. Our source is the official San Francisco Police Department crime stats. So where's your number coming from? Absolutely, that's a great question. So our data for, for crime incidents is the one on open data by SF local government. Mm -hmm. um, if you go to SFPD, that number is uh, 54. So um, we use the SF uh, local government data for this, but 
the good thing about this is that all of our code is public on GitHub. Uh -huh. So you could, just anyone who is an engineer could go swap out the data source from you know, SF local government to uh, SFPD uh -huh. and have it run on that data. Okay, and so, I mean, does this mean that you're still working on it, you're still getting more data? Um, talk about that process, because I think for right now, you're only using, what, the last two years? Is that right? Correct. So right now, we are in the process of adding more data, mm -hmm. making these models more accurate, and making them faster. Um, and uh, as we do that, this becomes more useful to everyone, mm -hmm. right? Um, so right now, we only have data for the last two years. Um, how about you can ask questions about 1980s or 1970s mm. and kind of see trends in different things. Like how did you know, crime go over decades? How did housing prices go over decades? Is what? that something you could do right now or you want to be able to do that? Eventually? You want to be able to do that. Okay. Yeah, and we'll soon get there in a few weeks. And, and where do you see this going eventually? I mean, obviously you're still working on it. Uh, there's still a lot to be done, which yeah. it's still cool that you have this already. Um, but where do you see it? I mean, do you see other cities using something like this? Absolutely. We have had people from New York, Boston, even Belgium reach out and say, hey, I would love to make this work for my city or my country. And what we did is we made the data and the code open. Mm -hmm. So anyone could go on the GitHub and click on the code uh, get it to run on their own database. The long-term goal is there's a ton of data out there on the internet that Google can just give you an answer for. But you can use AI to kind of get an answer to your questions and combine different data sources, right? Mm. Things like carjacking and rent. Mm. Um, and get answers to that within seconds. So something like, uh, find me the neighborhood with the cheapest rent and the lowest number of carjackings. Uh, exactly. Okay, and it would be able to do, come up with that. And you can also say, show me the apartments for rent there. Hmm. You can say, how many of these are one bedroom apartments? Wow. Yeah. Um, so, you know, the future of AI, we're seeing it more and more. We just saw the Republican National Committee come up with a video uh, using AI. I mean, sh we should, look at it, use it, um, but still be cautious at this point, do you think? Absolutely, I mean, you know, AI has a potential to do a ton, a ton of public good, mm -hmm. and that's what we are deeply motivated by. This is a really powerful technology, and as you can see, you can ask questions about your city. Um, and we think that there's a ton of positive potential in this technology, mm -hmm. and that's the thing that we wanna focus on. We wanna make sure that everyone focuses on that and not the bad stuff. That's great. All right, Rahul, thank you so much for coming, showing us how this works. You, people can log on, right, and, and mess with it, ask it questions, and play with it today, right now. It's free, sanfranciscogpd.com. Okay, all right, well, thank you so much for being here. This was fun. Of course, thanks, Karina. Of course.